What's up everyone, it's Jason Janna, and thank you for joining me another video right here on my channel. It's good to have you guys here, and today we're gonna unwrap, we're gonna unpack, and we are gonna talk and focus in on pricing. Now, I have to say right up front, I'm not gonna be talking about how you should be pricing your services as a DJ, what things should cost, what they should be, how to come up with the numbers, but I am gonna focus in on how you should be presenting yourself and your services to the people that are interested in hiring you for their events. We're really gonna kind of talk through the two main ways that a DJ or a service provider in the entertainment space should be or could be presenting their information to people that are looking to hire them. This stuff can kind of fit every different area of the business, whether you're a wedding DJ, a corporate DJ, you do travel and destination events, you do trade show or industry or nightlife or whatever, you can find value in this. If you are new to the game and you are kind of like struggling with how this whole sales process works, I hope you find great value in this video. And if you're someone that's done this for eternity, I hope you find value in this video. Now on my original kind of, uh, I guess, thought of doing this video, I wanted to kind of address some of the things that I'm commonly asked on Instagram or in my messenger. And Nick from SE sent me a quick text the other day and was like, you should focus in on this because I think it's relevant and people need help with this. So here we are today. If you ever want me to cover a video, shoot me a quick message. If it's a good dope topic, I'm down to share my perspective and give you some insight to what I think about it. So today we are talking about pricing and how you should be pricing your services for your clients and for your events. Originally when I was gonna do this, I was gonna do the versus kind of thing. Today, I think I reorganized my thoughts. I wanna do this more off the cuff, more authentic, more real, and I wanna talk about the two main ways that you can offer your service pricing to people that are looking to hire you. I'm gonna talk about some pros, some cons, and I'm gonna talk about the way I would do it if I was doing it that way. Okay, hope that makes sense. So I wanna share with you some tips, some tricks, and some suggestions if you're doing either one of these two next approaches or strategy in selling yourself, and I hope that it helps. At the end of this video, I'm gonna share with you how I do it, what's worked for me, and I'll give you kind of like the why. So let's focus in on this crazy conversation and this sometimes controversial topic with DJs on how you should be pricing yourself. Should you be offering yourself package pricing or a la carte pricing? That's really the conversation. Package versus a la carte. Now there are pros and cons to each one of these strategies or approaches, and it really has to fit you, your needs, the way that you offer your services, your business, what you're capable of, what you're technically able to do, and of course, your region, your market, and what's being asked of you. So this is not kind of like a one size fits all approach. I'm gonna share with you some pros and cons to each one of these things, and hopefully I shed some light to help you get a little bit further in this DJ game. Let's start this conversation focusing in on packaged pricing and people that bundle their services in order to make a sale. Now there's a lot of pros to this conversation, this strategy, and this way of doing things. As a matter of fact, it is probably the most common way that DJs sell themselves and the most common strategy that DJs use when providing pricing to people that are hiring them for their events. So from a pro side, I think that this strategy simplifies the sales process. It makes it very easy. You have choice A, B, or C. And in those options, you have different services that are given at different price points. Makes it very, very, very easy. A lot of times this, this one way of doing things allows you to give extra or perceived value, especially if you're offering an incentive the more you get, the more you save. Now that is not a philosophy or a strategy used by everyone, but I see it more often than not. When we circle back to the sales process, it makes it very easy because it's easy to train. And if you are not really good with sales, this strategy or this approach could help you tremendously. Another way that this strategy or approach could help you tremendously is if you don't offer a lot of different services or enhancements or things beyond music at your events. You see, I think the key to offering this kind of packaged approach 
is by being very simple and very clear when you're offering your services. Now, I think this is a great approach for any company, any large multi-op that is looking to multiply, that is looking to have a lot of different people or teams in different places simultaneously. It takes workload off of the sales process and the office support team, and it also makes troubleshooting, training, and scaling a lot easier down the road, especially as you start to grow into a future, creating a business. From a business perspective, I think this strategy wins because it allows you to very, very accurately forecast and predict not just the needs of your team or the events that you have on the books, but it allows you to get a very clear picture of the financial outlook for your business. These are all positives that make sense. Now, some of the cons to offering package pricing is it could be limiting. It could be difficult to sell the higher end or the more expensive service package because sometimes in the planning phases, people are not ready to buy the big stuff day one. It could complicate the sales process and make it challenging and or confusing if your packages are loaded with all these different services. Yes, it's a ton of value, but it's only a ton of value or perceived value if those services matter to that couple. Case in point, if you went to McDonald's and you bought a hamburger and for an extra dollar you get a Coke and a fries, for an extra two dollars you get a bigger fries and a bigger Coke, but if you're not interested in the fries or the Coke, the extra dollar or two doesn't matter. Get it? I can't believe I just used McDonald's as an analogy. Ah, 2020. I also think that sometimes when you offer bundled services or discounts on services, it devalues the service itself. Not just maybe the entertainment service, but the value in some of the enhancements that you might be offering for a discounted amount for your events. Now, these are things to consider from the con side of the argument regarding package pricing. So how would I offer package pricing if I was to do it? Pretty simple. I would actually keep it very simple. Less is more in the package world. I think the easier your packages are to follow, the better off you will be on selling them to people. When they're easy to understand, it's super easy to, to make decisions, right? When you overcomplicate things and add a ton of stuff, you, you run the risk of not only being confusing, but maybe losing an opportunity of someone going for your top package because there's just so much going on in it and it might be overwhelming to them. So I think less is more. And in the future, if I was to offer or introduce new services to my overall portfolio, I would consider having my three core packages and then I would maybe have for X amount of dollars, you can add this new service onto any one of the packages. That's pretty much how I would introduce new things. And on how I would build my packages is I would look at how things are basically asked of me for the things that we're talking about. So if we're talking about weddings, I would look at the last 100 weddings that reached out to my business. I would look at what they booked. I would look at what they were interested in. And I would say, where are my opportunities? I would then take that information and I'd put it against what I wanted to do with myself. So if I didn't like doing just music only services, maybe you start to move away from that by not even offering that level of service any longer. Now, all of this is gonna depend on your region, your company, what people are asking of you, but that's the beauty of it. If I was gonna be offering this stuff, I would have to have it make sense for me who was coming to talk to me, how I was booking my couples, and what was being asked of my business. I think when you look at all of this stuff, not just what's being asked of you, but where you wanna go, you start to develop these three or four options and never more than that. Coming up with the middle option being the most popular option, and I think I would kind of go from there. I hope that puts some clarity on this, and I hope that helps you in some way. So we just talked about package pricing. Now let's talk about the alternative, a la carte pricing. A la carte pricing is scary to some, maybe because they suck at sales, 
Maybe because they just couldn't figure it out. Maybe because they don't offer a lot of things. Whatever the case, I think there's a lot of, of pros, not cons, to this strategy. Now, it's the least popular. Simply straightforward. A lot of people are not doing it in the entertainment space. I don't know if it's because their ability to offer services is limited or they just have people not able to deliver on the sales process, but it is what it is and it's probably the least common of the two strategies that we're discussing in this video used by DJs and entertainment companies in our industry. I think the a la carte process is super dope. I think it allows you to sell more. I think it allows you to be flexible with people and allows them to buy things that matter specifically for their vision, for their venue, or for their expectations. I think it allows you to ultra personalize the presentation and I think it allows you to fine tune how everything comes together for them. I think it's also not overwhelming, like a large package, your package diamond. You don't have to come up with this gigantic deposit. You can piece part it over time. I think it allows you the opportunity to build relationships and so, so much more. By allowing your couples to select the services that matter, by allowing them to purchase line items on a menu, I feel is incredibly powerful. Now you have to be good at sales and you have to have somewhat of some kind of expansive portfolio, but a lot of people have the technical ability of not just executing a lot of cool things at events, but you also probably have friends in your market that you can partner with in the event you wanted to maybe offer someone something super cool that maybe you haven't invested in yet from your business. If you are not good at selling, a la carte pricing is not gonna work for you. If you're not good at connecting with people or building relationships, or if you wanna automate the entire process, a la carte pricing probably doesn't work great for you. If you're looking to go very, very wide with your services, having teams in a lot of different places, this strategy will be challenging. I have only used this strategy over the past 12 years at SCE. And I've used it because I consider SCE a boutique influence entertainment company. We take a lot of pride in designing our events around the people that we're working with, and we take a lot of pride in getting to know them. See, for me, it's all about building the relationship with people. And I think if you can build a relationship with people and people trust you with the biggest event of their life, in this case, a wedding, I think it puts you in a great position to strategically serve them with content, to maybe offer suggestions in the event that you have an idea that might benefit them, or you, know, you might have a way to introduce things in the future. Now at SCE, we're a big team, but we have a lot of assets at our, at our disposal from a company perspective, and all of our DJs all own a bunch of different things. In the event that one of our DJs doesn't have the ability of offering a service, that's when the company comes in and executes that service for that couple. At the SE Event Group, we have a really, really big team, and it didn't just start off that way. It started with just me, and me and one other person, and we've grown it over the past 12 years to what it is now. Super fortunate, but it's taken a lot of care, a lot of hard work, and we've failed a ton. So if you're missing sales, this might be a strategy that could be beneficial to you. If you're having an, an issue closing sales, this could be a strategy that works. If you haven't updated your service contracts in years, this might be something that might make sense for you, especially if you've added a bunch of new things to what you can do for your couples or the people that are hiring you for your events. There's no right way or wrong way. I know people that are super successful that offer package pricing and of course, a la carte pricing. Me, it's all about a la carte pricing, but that's how my business is set up. And these options hopefully will give you the ability to think through what will work best, not only for you now, but will help you in the future. All right, so that's it. If you've been struggling with sales or maybe things haven't been connecting the way they used to, maybe you need to update your package pricing. Maybe you need to rethink the way you're introducing things. Maybe you need to look at the a la carte structure to see if it works for you and your company and your events. You know what, just because you do something now doesn't mean you have to stay there forever. And I think as you adapt your service and you grow your service over time, you need to revisit things, you need to update things, and you need to stay current for what's being asked of you. 
Hopefully you found value in this video and I'd love to hear from you. So do me a favor, drop down below, drip a comment. Let me know what's working, what's not, what you struggled with, what's killed it for you, anything at all. I'll do my very best to, to not only answer you, but provide any insight I can to help you get to the next kind of like step of your journey. I appreciate you checking out this video here. Be on the lookout for another video dropping really, really soon. Thank you once again, and we'll talk to you, and we'll see you really, really soon.